all of us, we walked in the world. We, we were a particular way. But in the fullness of time, the grace of God found us. And now you and I carry the name. We carry the name. And we made a decision and said that we will dedicate our lives, consecrate our lives to the most high God. We want to submit to him. You want to check whether that is still true for you. You want to confirm to him and to yourself what that decision is. Who do you live for? Who do you belong to? For whose glory do you live? Do I live? Speak to your father. Thank you, father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, be exalted in the midst of your people always. Father, by the authority of the name, by the grace of God, Lord, we submit ourselves to you. We offer ourselves to you as those who have been brought from death to life. We offer ourselves to you, every part of us as instruments of righteousness. You said to us that blessed are your ears for they hear. Blessed are your eyes for they see, which then means, Lord, that we will receive and therefore we will be changed by the word. And we will, we, the word will be effective in us because of that gift of grace. Tonight, oh God, I proclaim every ear here blessed in the name of Jesus. We declare every eye here blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you, Father, that Lord grant to each of us the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of our hearts be enlightened, cause us to know, cause us to really know the hope to which you have called us, the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints. And then the power, the immeasurable greatness of the power that you have caused to be at work toward us, in us, through us, my Father. Lord, be glorified in the midst of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bar every demonic activity from our midst in Jesus' name. Every distraction in the name of Jesus Christ, I say no. We say no to every distraction, every distracting spirit. By the grace of God, we will be able to hear. We will be able to receive. And we will be able to share. For the Lord himself will teach us. We bless this hour in the name of Jesus. We bless it for the ministry of the spirit of God. We bless it for the name of Jesus Christ to be greatly exalted for the children of God to access all that he has for us to walk in his light. Thank you, my father. Thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. I bless God for this evening and I welcome all of us, dear sisters, to the first um, session that we are having. We, we have been led of the Lord, helped by the Lord to learn about prayer together. Himself is our teacher. 
And I trust him to lead us into all truth. Now, I also know that the spirit of God will minister not only through me, but he will enable us here to share from his word the light he has shown in the various areas. So I warmly welcome you and I want you to be tuned to the Lord and feel free to also speak and share and engage. We are seated around a table. The Holy Spirit is in us and among us. And if he chooses to speak through you, do not uh, hold back, but share what he has taught you. We are going to learn with his help what his word is saying about prayer. This will happen over a, a period of time. Now, I don't know for how long, but we know that he will equip us that we will become effective. You know, sometimes um, in the subconscious, we may feel that prayer may or may not work. <laughs> When something happens, then when all the options that we believe should work, don't work, there's a, oh, as for now, dear, hmm, it's only prayer, oh, it's only prayer. It's like where we have reached, can do nothing about it. And I don't know, when I say only prayer, I'm not confident. I'm actually just saying that I hope that God will hear me and I hope that he will do as I have desired of him. I hope, but I'm not sure. Actually, if I were more sure, if I were more confident, if all the promises on prayer were actually rightly working for me in my experience, don't you think that I would, and I'm speaking hypothetically here, I would like go straight to prayer on anything and everything and, and I will see the results. And the results are not coming because of any other thing, but because I know how to pray. I know God's principles for prayer. If I am in that space, then uh, prayer for me, that conversation with God, it's Charlie. <laughs> There's a confidence that comes with it. It's not your last resort at all. You go straight there because that's where the power is. The rest of it is when he directs you, okay, pass here, then you pass. Uh -huh. So I have seen in the word of God that God desires us to receive the answers to our prayer. You know, I asked, and maybe I can ask you as well. You see in scripture, Jesus said that, pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into the field. Now, did he say that and invite you and I to make such a request? Whereas that request, he did not have any intention of actually following through, granting it. That that request is actually reluctant to do it. That there is a possibility that you may or may not get. But just to exercise your vocal cords, I want you to just pray the Lord of the harvest. Is that the dynamic? I would say not. Anything that he says, I should ask for it. Definitely, it means he's ready to give it. Why else is he asking you or asking me to ask for it? He said, your father knows what you need before you ask him. But you should ask him. 
and he says so many things, ask and you shall receive. Sometimes don't you wonder whether it's true? <laughs> and some, many, many, many of us or many people can talk about, oh, um, I know so many people, they prayed, they waited on God. Uh, Charlie, me craving me, even me. I asked God for this or that. Um, Charlie, hmm. As for God, his ways are mysterious. As for God, hmm, you know, he knows better than us, more than us. So, so uh, yeah, in case, we'll see how it goes. There's no confidence, no confidence at all that whatever I ask in, in his name, I will receive it. That there is a stark contrast between those confessions and that the word of God, but those confessions are coming from some experiences. Why must our experiences be different from what the word of God is promising us? Tonight is the first session. So there are some questions that we are asking each other. The Lord I can see is staring us up. He's just staring us up. And I pray that by God's grace, you and I will consistently will build because he will teach us brick upon brick, layer upon layer. He may start with basics. And if, if I think that, oh, I already know it, I, I may miss the point. So I pray that all of us, me, myself included, whether I think is basic or is not basic, Charlie, I need it. And if I knew, Abi, I won't be sitting there asking to, to learn. I don't know. So I, I humble myself. God, teach me. Teach us. That's why we've humbled ourselves and we are gathered. So we are going to follow his lead. And he's just staring us up and saying to you and to me that read my word. In my word, I said that whatever you ask in prayer, believe you have received it, it will be yours. How come your testimony is that? Um. Hmm, prayer day, hmm, prayer day is good though. As for prayer, we know. Oh, prayer day, all of us, we all believe in prayer. We all believe in prayer, but uh, you see, the but uh, that is that where from that? What is it that has happened that has eroded or affected in some way my confidence or your confidence in the word that he said? Or is it that he was he was asleep and dozing and said those promises in the word? He wasn't sure. Or maybe it was for a certain era. It was only during when Jesus was on earth. That's when he, he really wanted people to ask and receive. But now in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, um, no, it's not. Uh, this is where you now begin to understand that his ways are not your ways. So it's not what you want that he wants. And at the end of the day, it's what he wants that will come to pass. Eh. Abi, he said that if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish. And I will do it. Did he not say? Did he not say in Matthew 18, 19 to 20, did he not say that if, uh, open a check, let's please, let's make sure it's still there. Maybe it's, you know, let's just open our eyes and see what he's saying and just check whether it's still there. Hmm? We can look at Matthew, Matthew 18. And let's look at 18 to 20 and note his language, note God's language. Hmm? This evening, God is staring us up. He is talking to us as we started. He's challenging us and he's saying, this is what my word says. And I want you to be conscious of it. I want you to see it and I want you to see or i want you to know that i really desire you to get what you ask for now i'll show you how it works that's what the holy spirit is telling you and i now if i read and you read from matthew 18 even look at from this and uh, well verse 18 and 19 says truly 
I tell you, truly, oh, he says truly to you, like truly, I tell you, whatever, see the word, whatever, note his language very well. I, hmm, anyway, let's go on, but note it, whatever, what does whatever mean? Whatever you bind on earth will, not me, will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, again, it's like, I won't leave it there. Um, let me even top you up. Again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask, what is anything? What does anything mean? So if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will. It will be done for them by my father in heaven. So what's the problem? It will. Is this true or is false? That's the question sometimes I believe is the Lord who asks me. The thing you are reading, is it true or is false? Because the way the thing is categorical, it's either true or false. There's no middle ground. Like sometimes, I don't see sometimes here. Do you see sometimes? I mean, let's check. Do you see a sometimes here? Do you see a sometimes that tells me that it may be perhaps most of the time? No. Look at it. It's so definite, so definitive. God wants us to have what we ask for. He does. He does. He does. So he's staring us up this evening. He's staring us up this evening. Did you read the scripture that said, ask and you shall receive? Ask you shall receive. Not ask and you may receive. Ask, you shall receive. Not ask and uh, let us consider whether you shall receive. No. Ask and you shall receive. Did we see it? Seek, you will find. Knock, the door will be open to you. So I say, hey, are you sure that ask and you shall receive? Is it true? 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 Is it really, really true? I'm asking you, my sisters, I'm asking you. Is it true? And I don't mean, is it true that it is in the Bible? I'm asking you whether it is true that what your father said, he's doing it. Is it true that ask and you shall receive? That whoever asks, receives. Is it true? God is staring us up. It, can, it cannot be true and false. It cannot be false or true. It, it has to be one. It cannot be both. So it is either... I do ask and I do receive. Therefore, I know. Like Jesus said, Father, thank you. I know you always hear me. When I was reminded of 1 John 5, 14, I, it helped me understand more what Jesus was saying. Because 1 John 4, uh, 5, 14 says that this is the confidence we have toward him. God, he's bold. Though. This is the confidence that we have toward him. That if we ask him anything, what is anything? Anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, the word says that, and if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, look at the whatever too again. Then we know, not we hope. Not we are trusting. No, 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 no. We know that we have the thing that we have asked of him. We know it. So when he says, said, Father, I, I thank you. I know you always hear me. That scripture shows me that he's also saying, I know you always give me what I ask for. Do you see? 
because we know that if he hears us, whatever we ask, then we have the petitions that we ask from him. So when he says, I know you always hear me, or I thank you that you always hear me, then he's saying that thank you. the hearing was to what end? As somebody said, to what end? Hearing are uh, for record purposes that what they are recording in the library that if he came to ask for this, is that all? That's not the kind of hearing. What, what kind of hearing? Who wants that? What, what kind of hearing is that? Ooh, for, for what purposes? Just to fill space in the records of heaven that, yes, people are praying. No, 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 no. It cannot be. The prayers that God hears, he says that his hearing is equal to his giving. For we know that if he hears us, then whatever it is that we're asking for, we have it. Not we will have it. Not we may have it. That he may consider giving it to us. We have it. So how is your prayer life? How is my prayer life? And what is the extent of my confidence in these scriptures? I mean, you know, we as believers, uh, it takes a lot of boldness, <laughs> For you to look left and right and, and whisper that, yeah, I've seen it in the scripture, but I don't think it really works all the time. I think sometimes uh, God, God, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. Mm, yeah, you just look over your shoulders and whisper to yourself. So sometimes it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I can even give you an example. The other time I was asking for this and that, I said that it should happen by something. It, it didn't happen. I'm still waiting still waiting so that thing there yeah it's true but you have to also you know protect yourself you know you have to make your own arrangements you, you, because Charlie that thing it may or may not work it's in the bible mom so we can't say God is lying but Charlie the thing doesn't really work the way he's written it that is coming from an experience or some experiences because if it works as he has written it a lot of my behavior and your behavior will be different the world says that actions speak louder than words. And the Bible says to us that we, how do, how do I call it? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. As a man thinks, so is he, right? So in my speech and in my actions, it would demonstrate what I truly believe. So even when I say with my mouth that, oh, yes, oh, I mean, I, I know, oh, I, I believe God. I mean, oh, God, oh, I, I mean, if you ask, of course, of course, ask and you shall receive, of course, of course. Ask and you shall receive, of course. But how come that with that great confidence that I claim, when I have a need, I don't think that when I ask him, I receive it. I'm afraid. My heart is beating. Giddy, 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 giddy. And I am looking at other things to tell me that God will answer my prayer. I'm looking at the circumstances. If the thing is moving in the direction that I had hoped for, then, oh, oh the Lord, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. He's answering my prayer. So I asked him to, you know, change this and change my boss. Nowadays, when he comes, he's smiling at me. Oh, God is good. So that is what is giving you the assurance that the prayers have been answered. Now, so if you ask that, uh, you made that request to the Lord, and your boss has been coming and still the face is as straight as ever as that. Do you realize that sometimes your confession shows that you do not believe that asking you shall receive has happened to you? You are waiting. Your testimony comes from the physical circumstances. Now, let me ask you. Did Jesus send any of his disciples to the fig tree to go and check whether what he had spoken to the fig tree had worked in order to confirm it. You remember the man who came to Jesus Christ and said his servant was unwell and so on and so forth. And Jesus said to him, go, your servant will live. And the man believed him and he went. Do we have any record that Jesus will send Thomas or Bartholomew to go and check whether it, the thing worked there? When he spoke to the Syrophoenician woman, did he 
send any scouts later to go and check whether what he spoke worked. The demon has left your daughter. It worked. Do we see anything that tells me or tells you that the calibration, the, the, the evidence that my prayer has been heard is the physical manifestation that I see? Tonight, God is turning over stones. Any spiders that are hidden somewhere at the back behind religious fences, in the name of Jesus Christ, they must be flushed out. They, it must be laid bare. Then you and I humbly go before him and say, Father, oh, I, 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 I know you said so, but as you have known since long ago, my confidence is up to so-so and so percent, but because the last time I asked you for, you know, that job change, and I'm still in the same job, nowadays when somebody comes and says she's not feeling well, cramp, you, know, you know, I pray for them and, and I tell them to go, go to the hospital, and then I follow up on whether they went to the hospital, they are taking their medicine, because that's where I expect the healing to come from here. <laughs> <laughs> Father, please, uh, we both know I shouldn't speak louder than we So, yeah, I spoke with my mouth, but I did something else. Daddy, I, I want to shift camps. I want to shift camps. If prayer did not work, if prayer is a gamble, then how different are you and I from those who depend on luck? They say, fingers crossed. Is that a prayer? Am I? My prayer becomes a fingers crossed matter, a matter of lack, circumstances. It may or may not happen. Is that what it is supposed to be? I am a child of God. Is that my inheritance? Is this my inheritance? An uncertain, you know, response to my request to my father. I don't know whether I'll get it or I'll not get it. But when I read my father's word, he, he wants me to be sure. He wants me to know I receive it. So over the next, whatever period that the Lord is intending for us to have these conversations, eh, he is going to take us through little by little. We will take our time. We are not going to write any exam. Like there's an exam, you know, maybe on January 31st that we, are, we have to finish some syllabus and go and write it. No, thank God, no. So we'll go at his pace. The point of this is not, you know, it's not to pour, but the point of it is for us all to learn, myself included, and everyone who he speaks through included. We are all learning. And he wants to make you and I confident ambassadors in him. We've got to know the ways and the means. We need to know the principles that operate in this kingdom. We need to know because the, the results he wants us to get are obvious. But if you compare to the results that some of us may have walked or may be seeing or may be thinking we have, you see that what is written and what your results are are, are not the same. What is your success rate in prayer? Let me ask you, what's your success rate? Would you say 100%? Yeah, before God and man, I mean, this one, um, yeah, he already knows. What's your success rate? What's my success rate? But what's the success rate that you read in the scripture? Take a look at uh, Mark eleven twenty four. You know the scripture so well, and it's not the only scripture. What is the success rate of prayer that you see? Mark eleven twenty four. Please, if you can open it in your Bible as well, it will be very, very good. All these things that we are doing, we are going to be in the word, in the word, in the word. So I would encourage you to, to enter the word if you can maybe you are driving you can't it's okay but if if at all you can please position yourself such that you can enter the word mark eleven twenty four 24 says that therefore i tell you 
whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it and it will be yours. What success rate do you see here? What success rate is your father and my father talking about here? 20%, 50%, 60, 70, 55, 50, 50, 70, 75, 80%, 90% or 100? Do you, do you see? What is the success rate? Now, how do I compare my own experience? What is my personal success rate? Mm. <laughs> uh, as for when you enter John chapter 14 and those areas, ah, honestly, you, you have to ask yourself just some honest questions. The thing is it true or is not true. John 14. Fourteen verse uh, thirteen. Fourteen thirteen says, "And I will do." See the word again. Whatever, whatever, whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So I'll do it. Whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. What's the success rate here? What's the success rate here? I don't know if there are any other scriptures you want to talk about. But clearly, Father wants us to have this. Now, why are we not having it? Ask for that one to hear us told us in the word it's all there and we are going to look at those as to the conditions of prayer and so on but that's not the only thing we'll be talking about there is um there are some fundamentals that you and i will be taught by the lord in this process okay so note for yourself personally, this is a practical thing, it's, it's, it's for real. We are all here because we, we need this thing for real. It's not academic at all, at all. Oh Lord, no, it's not academic at all. So tell him, <laughs> ah, God is good. We need this because you see, we are the ones who have said that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And that we want to be aligned and conformed to the image of Christ. And that's God's agenda too in my life and in your life. This is our purpose. This is our life. What else should I be doing? But to be taught how to live the word. And that I may walk it and live it in my experience. So that when I look at my life or when you look at your life, it is an uh, it is it is an evidence that the word of God is true. There are many people's lives and testimonies that seem to be prime evidences or examples to proclaim that God lies. Many people, some are Christians, but from their tone and from their experiences, they present evidences, convincing stories, experiences from, you know, years and years and time and time, some painful, some, you know, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, they are like witnesses that testify that the word of God is not, it's not true. It doesn't work the way you, it's not like that. Oh, no, no, it doesn't work like that. But you and I, we want our lives, even if we used to be like that, even if we had that background, now, now, where we are, God and we, by his grace, want us to become examples, testimonies of his grace. It's like, point to Sister Amma, say, oh, Charlie, I read uh, John 40 says, whatever I ask the father, Charlie, that thing doesn't work. So, oh, look at Sister Amma's life. 
So consider my life. It works. Sister, let me tell you, there's no prayer I have asked the Father because of X, Y, Z, and Q that I have not received. I tell you, it works. None. That's what God wants. None. And this is what I've learned. This is what I've learned. Then the person is encouraged. And you are not lying. It's not like you have, you have to create some story to, to make God look good. He, he, he's able to take care of himself. He's a big boy, a big man, a um, big person. <laughs> he knows how to take care of himself. You know, he, he does. So we want to walk in the word in truth. So where will we start from? We will start from the background and as we, he has brought us to this point. We will start or continue with the background that my dear sister, in the same way as your salvation and my salvation there, there, there were clear, it's like we saw it in the word of God or we heard it from the word of God and everything was connected to the word of God. That's how we came to Christ. In the same way, we cannot do prayer by logic. You see, in the same way, everything that I do or that you do in this work must be based on the Bible, on the word. Don't, it's not just tradition. You know, I was born in a Christian home, so we know how to pray, blah, 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 you are praying. We need to learn. We have to do it by the book, by the book only by the book. So the book, which is the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, will be our guide in the journey. Any kind of attitude towards prayer, any approach to prayer, any prayers that are offered outside of the principles that the Word of God teaches, eh? Sister, you might as well be singing London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. The effect will be the same. It, the effect will be the same. Or maybe, okay, this one, maybe it, it's very therapeutic. I mean, you, you, blah, 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 whatever is therapeutic. So, hallelujah. Okay, that one too is fine. It's good. But I mean, don't, don't expect too much. It must be by the word. If it's not by the word, then Charlie, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But how will I know that it's by the it's by the word? And I can't, I should not, I can't, and I should not base it on hearsay. I cannot and I should not base it on tradition. Those of us who have been in the church for long, so you've gotten into the habits, you know, you know what to say, how to say it. You've heard sermons and those things, and you are just saying some, or you say, you know, like hey, hey, you have a need and you know how to talk to God. No. He's calling us to grow deeper where you eyeball the thing for yourself in the book. You check the formula and make sure that all your patterns are aligned. So you are straight on the book, by the book. So that is guideline number one. Prayer must be by the book. And by his grace, he's going to walk us through this some more. The other part of this, or the reason why this is relevant is that actually, this whole show, this whole earth, the human beings being born, and all the whatever, facing circumstances, the enemy, this and that, salvation, everything. It's, it, there's, a, there's an architect and he has the blueprint and the master plan. If you read the Bible and you have been reading the Bible, so you can see he's told us the whole story. Huh? He's even told us the end of the story, the end of this, this current earth. He's told us this is where the thing is going. This is where it, how it began. 
This is the things that happened. And uh, this is how I revealed myself. And this is whatever. And this is the opportunities that are given you. And this and that and that. And evil is going to increase. And righteousness too will do this. And da 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 da. And the enemy will do that. And death will be the final enemy. And then the. the, 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 the the earth will be rolled up. The, the, the earth will be destroyed with fire. The heavens will be rolled up. He's told us from beginning to the end, the plan is not going to change. Because of that, we recognize that he has particular laws and principles. Just look at our father. Look at his creation, what we can see of his creation. Principles. There's a lot of creativity, but everything has the way it works. Everything. He gave us the law of gravity. So you, you and I know what will happen when you jump off the, 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 the moving car or you jump off a high something. The law is there. And what will result when you work by the law is there. And what will result when you break the law too is there. There are laws, there are, there are people who fly airplanes and things. There are laws that are higher than the laws of gravity, but they are all laws. Everything in the creation as has been revealed to us by our father works within the framework that he has established. There is nothing that works outside of that framework. Let's look together at some scriptures. Please note them down. I bore them for yourself. Please be clear. This is a very, very important foundation because it will give you and I the confidence we need as we approach him because we know, we know, we know, we know the framework. This is the constitution of the universe, this Bible. It's the constitution of the universe. As, as, as what the Father has chosen to make available to us here on earth in these ages or in this age. Colossians 1, 15 to 17. Colossians 1, 15 to 17 is the first scripture that we'll read. We'll also look at Romans eleven thirty six. We will also look at Revelations 4, 11, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. And these scriptures, please feel free to read beyond the scriptures. These are like a particular verse. We'll give you a couple of verses. Please 